What's going on everyone? It's Rich Lux and in today's video, girl, you won't believe the drama. Okay guys, so I'm here with... James Vincent. And if you don't know who he is, you're gonna be shook by his makeup looks, girl. Okay, he is a legit pro MUA, and I know a lot of you are like, oh, girl, James Charles is pro MUA. Girl, no, right here, <laughs> pro MUA the house. Can you tell the kids at home some of the people you've done? Yeah, well, I say I've been doing makeup for so long, I've done everyone from Lady Gaga to Barack Obama, Marilyn Manson, See? Amy Winehouse was my client, Nirvana, a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. And so we just wanted to talk about like the makeup industry. We talked about some trends that you picked. Sure. We talked about trends. He did a seminar at the Makeup Houston. So for those who don't know what that is, you want to let them know what that is? Yeah, the Makeup Show is the largest pro makeup event in the US. It's a brands giving discounts, it's education with some of the biggest names in the business. And what we try and do is celebrate the makeup community and let people see that artistry is more than just buying a lipstick. It's connection, it's love, it's community, yeah. it's fun. It's more than, to me, it's, it was more than just like a convention. Yeah. It was like, Everyone who loves makeup was was there. Yeah, and I didn't think I was gonna buy anything, but I bought so much. You stuff. bought you bought so yeah. much. Yeah, and I'm gonna show you guys like in another like a haul video. But I want to show you this palette. You want to show them this one sure. right there? It's got it. So he promoted this palette, and I went and bought four of them. And so I gave three away. And look, let's check out the colors. You're gonna be shook by it. Like I really do like this purple right there. And then the people who make the palette, they were there. Yeah, like I actually got to meet them. But the thing that I like about the show is it's not just the artists that are working in the stores, it's the owners of the companies, yeah. it's the international artists, it's the people who really do it. And like Glow Girl is developed by a makeup artist named Tosca, who's from San Francisco, who's representing women of color. She's representing yeah. artists of color and she does it all on her own. And that's why I love the independent brands. Yeah. So a lot of people, they're, they're probably still not convinced that you're sickening. Because I think they're <laughs> sickening. But I, okay, you did work with Fenty. I did. Like, tell yeah. them what your, your hand in that. So, um, we worked with Rihanna to launch Fenty in 17 countries on the same day. I interviewed over 2,800 makeup artists for Rihanna to get to the final two that rep the brand, Priscilla and Hector. And wow. we interviewed over 800 people here in Texas alone. So, Rihanna's goal was to find that diamond in the rough, that makeup artist who nobody knew, yeah. and give them an opportunity. So I love that. That is awesome, because yeah. most people, they just want, like, give me, like, like if he was still around, like, Kevin O'Connor, I just want him, Yeah. right? But you actually to cultivate somebody, and I think I like that, to find diamonds in the rough and then cultivate people. And that's really yeah. what I do. Like, I like to build community. Right now, I'm working on a project with Pat McGrath to build her London and UK teams, and we really want to find kids in the like, clubs. How many people can people. say that? You know, like not people can say what you just said. Yeah, well, like seriously. Yeah. And then you did work with Mac too. I worked with Mac really in the early days. I think when I started with Mac, there were two Mac stores. Yeah. And it was such a great time because I was a club kid and Mac was all ages, all races, all sexes. We just were a party and everybody wanted to be a part of it. And yeah. that's where I fell in love with makeup. And that's when I started doing makeup as a job yes. and not just to go out at night. Okay, so okay, so since you're a makeup art, the pro one, is it hard to find guys to date? Uh, let, me, let, me tell you, let me tell you my tea first. Well, I don't know if you're married or anything. He's probably straight, who knows? But I'm just, <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, okay, you see the triangles and there's posters on the wall, which might be a hot topic pretty soon <laughs> and stuff. But I'm just saying, like, when guys come over, like, yeah. this, these doors are closed. Because yeah. the minute they find out that I do makeup, they they just think that I'm a drag queen or think I'm super feminine, and they're yeah. like, I mean, I hate that talk. You, you, you know what I mean? Yeah, you go. You know what I'm talking you about? You know, like I was a, a club kid when I was young, but I've always been like a big boy. I've always been a bear. Yeah. And some of my best friends are like guys who wear makeup every day. For me, that has nothing to do with masculinity. I'll wear eyeliner out during the day or at night. I'm still gonna bring you home and be your dom top dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gay at all. So um, every makeup artist has a different technique. Yeah. And I think you said yours was very like simple, minimalistic. My and makeup is like really smudgy, minimal. hot. Stuff, I do. Yeah. When I moved to New York City, I had come from working in hip hop. I worked for LaFace with people like TLC and Salt oh Peppa. And so when I was in New York, I started assisting Kevin Aquan. Yeah. And Kevin was such a monumental figure in my life. And he really taught me how to do makeup. But then things were changing. It was the 90s, grunge was big. Yeah. And I really wanted to see skin. I wanted to see eyes. I wanted to celebrate faces. So uh, my style developed to be a little more minimal yeah. and a little grungy. My, my look that I love is like you went out on Friday night in your makeup, woke up in somebody 
somebody else's bed yeah. Saturday. Yeah. And then have to go right and to And then I like when you said, guys, if you ever go to the makeup show, right? He does, you, you, you always do the opening press. I do, yeah. Okay, he talked about how there's like this swing, like a pendulum that swings. Like, like now that Trump's in office, makeup is more what now? As politics goes yeah. more conservative i think fashion and makeup become more alternative yeah so i like, agree 100. everybody's coming out now with their like crazy because the government is telling us that we can't do things so all the kids are saying no this is what we look like this is who we are queer culture is at the forefront right now because we have to fight for it again yeah so i always feel like a lot of uh makeup right now is like real gimmicky i always <laughs> talk about that and to me it sells <laughs> I think makeup that is, has gimmicky I, sales. I can't talk about that. Yeah, yeah. But I feel yeah. like, in my opinion, like, I like gimmicks in a way. Like, face mask, like 24K face mask or snail mask. Like, to me, those are gimmicks, yeah. right? But I like it because they're fun to try. And I want to talk about, like, trends. Yeah. What, do you, what do you think is trending or going to trend? I think trend right now for 2019, yeah. we're seeing trend come so quickly that it's reactionary. You know, as we see Instagram and social media and reality TV wearing heavier foundation on the runway and the red carpet, it goes more natural. Yeah. But the thing that we are seeing for trend is color, is texture, glitter, gloss, bright shades, graphic liners, because people want to have fun with makeup. Yeah. And I love that part. Yeah, look, this, like, just to show them, like, so you pick up that MAC palette. This one just came out. We were talking to her right before we filmed. And look at the color in it. Like, the last time I seen something like that, I think it was Makeup Revolution, or was it Makeup Forever had that Volume 2 Artist Palette? Yeah. Remember, it had like a lips on it, and I think I might still have I it. do the Danny Palette. Yeah, and it had all the colors. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then Urban Decay did the Electric Palette. You remember that one? I do. Like, to me, and then for MAC to have that one, I was just like, wow. And these are colors that MAC has had from the beginning, those bright yellows, those bright bold blues, but I think people were afraid of them. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love about makeup and that's what I love about YouTube and Instagram and influencers. Everybody can play and it's makeup. If you don't wanna yeah. wear a bright, bright color, take it off. But I love that people are having fun with makeup. I do too, I think a lot of people are scared. Yeah. They're scared to wear like the color, or especially the women. Like I know I don't wanna offend the woman community, <laughs> but like, Women just tend to go with the, with the, you know, with the little bronze and the little copper eye nude lip and stuff like that. And they're scared to for the pinks and the blues and stuff like that. So how do you think makeup's changed? I think makeup has become more individual. You know, I remember um, when things were very nude and very brown and people were afraid to try color. And then a friend of ours, David, had a line called Obsessive Compulsive Cosmetics. And it was the first time people had seen blue lips and green lips. And I remember oh, yeah. going to the bank and seeing a girl in blue lips or going to the airport and having the like security guard in a green lip. And that's when I knew things were changing. And now I see my 13 year old, nine year old nieces playing with these makeups and just doing these crazy looks. And I love that. Yeah. So what, what are you loving right now in makeup? Like any specific palette that you really like or right now like, or like anything go to. Oh my God. My go to right yeah. now, Danessa Myricks. I think that she's such a genius with see, color. I don't even know who that is. This uh, is why I love having him yeah. here because we always think about like, we just know what's in Sephora. Uh -huh. We just know what's in Ulta. But then you have this whole other community outside of that yeah. that has their own makeup lines. Like this one right here, like the Goddess palette we showed earlier. And that's what I like, because I feel like you kind of highlight that. Well, I think that's why you have to pay attention to the pros, because yeah. we tend to find those things. Danessa is the Director of Innovation for Benefit Cosmetics. So she developed all their brow stuff, all their lash stuff. But with her own line, she's doing these really bold, bright, waterproof colors that last 24 hours. You can use them anywhere See, on the no face. no one would know that someone who works with Benefit Cosmetics has their own line. Yeah. You know, unless you just, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And I think other things too, like Pat McGrath is like in Sephora, yes. but she's still pulling her inspiration from the world around her. I'm a big fan of what Pat is doing. I think that there are skincare lines like Twin Medics that are like revolutionary yes. in the way that we wear makeup. Which we have it right here, right? Yeah, I think Guys, that those are some of the things I love right This now. one right here, okay, so I was gonna show you like a bit sure. more quick. So you put this on, right? So it looks like, it doesn't look like much. And then you give it some time and it kind of like bubbles up and it starts popping. And then it kind of all goes away and just wash it off. It's with air. It's a great way to oxygenate the skin. So if you've been out the night before drinking or you're tired, maybe you've got allergies, it's a great way to make sure that your skin is really bright and beautiful. Yeah, so it's gonna start like, I guess I wanna say like when oxygen hits it, yeah. then it starts to like really start working and stuff. But it's anyway. great for my old skin. So when I drink too much. <laughs> so what got you into makeup? Um, for me, I really fell into it. I say I'm an accidental makeup artist. 
Wow. Um, I was work, you know, wearing looks in the clubs and then I was a social worker and I was really looking at like, why was it makeup available for everybody? Why couldn't women of color wear makeup? Where was size, shape, color, queer? And because of that, I started working for Mac and Mac really trained me. You know, they really taught me to do makeup. And then yeah. I assisted, I took in every class I could. I worked with every artist I could until I could call myself a makeup artist. You know, I, I feel like, cause I get people asking, they're like, I want to be a makeup artist or I want to do YouTube and review makeup. And I'm like, it's so, to me, it's so competitive. Yeah. It's so saturated that it's almost hard to stand out. Well, I you think know? it is saturated. Like when I started, there were a few hundred makeup artists. Yes. We now have like 8,000 makeup artists that come to the makeup show in New York. But yeah. I think it's easier in a way because there's so much more available. Mm -hmm. You have to think when I started, there were a handful of magazines. Yeah. There were four TV channels. Now with Netflix and filming and HD and online magazines, like there's yeah. work everywhere. People get their makeup done every day. You can live in the smallest town in the world mm -hmm. and you can make a living as a makeup artist. You just have to know how to do it and what to do it. And yeah. I think- and you, got, and you gotta be good at it too. You know, yeah. <laughs> For real. But I think, you know what? Makeup lets anybody be or do anything they wanna be. That's yeah. why I love it. Yeah, when I was on YouTube a couple years ago, like all there was was just like Mac. And people would do like Mac hauls, mm -hmm. you know, Mac, like Mac makeup, not the computers. But like, <laughs> there wasn't like much to talk about. And now there's so many different brands New out. brands every day. And it's like, they're popping up. And it's kind of, to me, I know that there are brands out there, and you probably know them, that are really good, but mm -hmm. aren't getting the exposure. Yeah. Because there's not, like, not enough money behind it in a way. And that's kind of like what my job is. I feel like I hold the histories in makeup. Like there's yes. a brand called Senna Cosmetics that is one of the oldest artistry lines. Eugenia is the guru, the original goddess of eyebrows. Anastasia worked for Eugenia, and Eugenia invented the small angled brush. Eugenia invented brow gel. She invented the brow stencil. Her line is still there. She's still doing work. She does Barbara Streisand, Bette Midler. She did Madonna's makeup, but she's a pro, so a yeah. lot of people don't know who she is. Exactly. And she changed the game. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, there's this whole pro community outside of like, the influencer community yeah. on YouTube. Because a lot of people, this is all they know. Mm -hmm. And so you really have, if you really love makeup, like you remember the books, like the makeup? I remember people, people used to buy makeup books. Yeah. Right, and then now they just watch tutorial. I think, it, you know, it's information is more readily available, yeah. but I still love my books because I like to have them around the house yeah. for Do reference. you have any books you can recommend? Some of my favorite books, everybody knows the Kevin Aquan books, yeah. but I would say if you're watching this channel and you love makeup, Sandy Linter's book, Disco Beauty, is a must have. It was written in the 70s. Sandy Linter was the first makeup artist to do fashion makeup in New York. She was Gia's girlfriend. Mm -hmm. She changed the game. Any book by Linda Mason. Linda Mason did all of the makeup for Comme de Garçon, for John Galliano. She has all of these amazing books that are available. Any of Danessa Myrick's books on contour and shape. Like these are really great books on how to create makeup. Okay, so he also has his own brand. I do. Let's talk about it. I've got a brand called Rebels and Outlaws. That's a way for artists and creatives to kind of protect their energy and prepare their space. Check so it out. we do things like brush cleaner. This is it, guys. Like I, I use brush cleaners. Yeah. Like I know there's like the foam one, but I like getting the brush. And I, I do it the wrong way where I kind of waste a lot of product. Yeah. So I put the water on it and I just start going like that. You can do that. And that's what I do. But it, it goes by really quick. Yeah. But. Cause I don't think you know it. There's a huge crystal community on YouTube. Oh yeah. And there's a huge candle community on YouTube. I did not know. Yeah, that. they review candles. Yeah. They fight with each other. And it's, it's very that. There's there's what? a there's candle drama. You wouldn't think that there would be. Yeah. Cause cause somebody would be like this, like pretend this was a candle, yeah. which he does have candles, guys. I do have right candles. Right here with crystals in it. That's two in one. Okay. So this is the drama. They'll be like this. Oh my gosh, guys, I went to Bath and Body Works and I bought this candle and it smells so good. I've been using it all day. They go like that and then people will be like, you haven't even burned it. You're <laughs> lying. Like, and then they start tying us to the drama. But <laughs> I want to get yeah. a new candle fight. Yeah. And so his candles have crystals in it. Yeah. And they're on top so you can see it. <laughs> yeah. What I do is I use different oh. colors and crystals and herbs Take to set out. different intentions, to bring across different wishes. Um, it's just a great way to kind of yeah. like focus when you get home. But do, do they have an intent already on it or no? Yeah, or this you... one is a soothsayer and storyteller. Blue candles are about your throat chakra. This one is about speaking your truth, finding your own voice, and having clear vision. 
That is, oh, a lot of people need that. A little bit witchy, a little witchy, a little witchy, a little hippie. I like that. Okay, and this one, for all the haters in the comments, <laughs> this is for y'all. Clear that out. Yeah. So this you, is lavender and sage. It's about getting rid of the negatives. Getting rid of all the negative haters in your life <laughs> and just, you know, getting rid of them all. Okay, so I think I love him, guys. I love him so much, so I brought him here. And I hope that you guys love him too. Please support him. I'm putting his link down below. You can check out his look. This is a pro MUA. It's not an influencer, guys. And I think that you, we just need more of you. I this wish is why I could we clone need to you. sit together and hang out. Yeah. I need out. more people like this. I'm guy. gonna have to do you do my makeup the next time oh. we're in the club together. <laughs> all right, all right. No, I'm down. I'm all down. Right, I'm in. Okay, guys. If you like the video, smash that like button, comment, rate, subscribe, and please check them out. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye. See you later, guys.